What's up everyone, welcome back to Let's Play Bayonetta. In the last episode, we had just gotten done collecting an LP after killing our first beloved, and it's almost going to be flash time, uh, flashback time. However, I am going to be replaying this little part of the game because I had a recording mishap happen. So what happened was I closed the game off uh, at the end of the last episode, and instead of continuing when I came back, I manually loaded a save, but it was the wrong save file. So, long story short, I've replayed all of Chapter 1 up until this point, but the bright side, I can point out this broken witch heart that I didn't point out uh, last time I recorded this. So, in other news, it must be getting close to the end of the world, because I'm uploading two Bayonetta episodes without a month gap between them. Uh, on the bright side, we only have to wait, like, two more days until this end of the world scares also demonstrated to be wrong, and we can move on to the next rambling, insane theory perpetuated by uh, raving lunatics whose understanding of and regard for things like science and actual scrutable evidence is non-existent. What are you doing? Let's go. Anyway, enough of that. Now we have a flashback boss fight, or at least part of a boss fight. So as far as, like, actual story reasons why this is happening, there isn't much of one. It's Bayonetta seeing something kind of familiar and gaining back at least a fraction of her memory. The main reason this is here because is because uh, Kamiya and another uh, developer, I can't remember his name, argued a lot about whether or not this cool little boss fight against the enemy's name is Fortitudo. They argued a lot about whether or not this was here, and ultimately, this should be here, and ultimately they found uh, that the scene is a lot more impactful, a lot more cool with it, and it's hard to argue with that, because Fortitudo is an awesome-looking enemy. Uh, this initial fight here isn't too terribly interesting or challenging. Um, Fortitudo has four attacks, four main attacks. He has the fireballs. That one I thought was a... I misread that as his tail whip attack, which you have to jump over. He is that double bite attack, and then each head is a bite. And that about sums this fight up. There's not, it's not too terribly complicated. Uh, we do spoilers fight Fortitudo uh, in full later in the game, but yeah, that's for another time. So I'm actually not sure whether or not my uh, my wicked weave attacks will hit him my normal like my normal attacks my kicks and my punches don't have the range but I wonder if the uh, the wicked weave the finisher for the combo will actually extend all the way out there and do some extra damage to him because otherwise the only real way to do damage to him is just to wait for him to bite and then hopefully you uh you have the timing to activate which time and you can get some, uh, some decent hits off. Otherwise, it's all bullet damage. But, as you can see, you only have to take away about a quarter of his health. And then he flies away. Now, back to normal time. And I believe here we, uh, we can visit Rodan from here. And we can turn in that LP we got in the last episode. Let's see. I think the shop is around this corner. Yes, it is. Awesome. Oh, and there's another diary page. Uh, this one is called A Witch's Brew. And this is a pretty cool notebook, especially compared to some of the other early ones. Uh, this one, what it does is it contextualizes the concoction mechanic within the narrative. So at the, Antonio at this point has discovered the existence of alchemy. And he notes that it's an offshoot of concocting, which is only practiced by the Umber Witches. And I will finish that up after the dialogue in this little cutscene. Well, well. An Angelic Kim's Gold LP. Got your hands on something awfully rare, haven't you? That thing is the perfect bait to coax out some of Hell's ugliness. One note hits their ears, and a damn who's who of Inferno comes pouring out of the inner circles. Then I can use them to breathe life into what I make best. 
weapons of mass destruction. Tell you what, you give me that record and I'll order up something so fiendish, angels will cry at the sight of it. I'll just have to pop down to the tropics for a bit. So take a load off. So yeah, concocting is an offshoot of, uh, or alchemy is an, uh, an offshoot of concocting, which is only practiced by the Umper Witches, and as Antonio notes, it was kept secret, but some of those secrets spilled out during the witch hunts. And at the end, we discover that Antonio is aware of the existence of the in-between realm of Purgatorio. He's a little rude, but he makes up for it with charm. Be nice to him, okay? And now we have our first unlockable weapons, the Onyx Roses, which are basically sawed-off shotguns. And unfortunately, we won't use them that much, because even though I like a lot of things about them, uh, I feel like they interrupt the flow of combat too much, and I'll get into that in a second. So I, l I really love the design, like the black with the gold trim, and just the idea of these really ornate, sawed-off shotguns is so cool. And they do a lot of damage, they have a really fast charge modifier, they, they have a lot of stun, but I feel like using them compared to the Scarborough Fair, they interrupt the flow of combat in a way that I just don't like getting used to. So I tend to stick with the Scarborough Fair. There is one use that I can see coming up for them. Uh, there is uh, an Alfheim gate in the second chapter where you only get a you get a limited number of punches and kicks. So you need to really be efficient and maximize your damage. So I'm thinking that the Onyx Roses, uh, the Onyx Roses might be really helpful there, but otherwise I can't see myself using them too much. I will try to show off uh, some of the cooler weapons later on. And as you can see uh, there, I got the Air Dodge and the Stiletto, and they're both... Uh, the Air Dodge is exactly what it sounds like. The Stiletto is a gap closer, kind of like a charge attack, or a charge... I don't want to say charge attack, because that is a different connotation than what I mean. Uh, pretty much it causes Bayonetta to charge into an enemy. So they're both really helpful. And this fight is, uh, I think this is another beloved. And the first half of this fight takes place here, and he's just trying to slam you on this bridge. It's, oh god, that sounds terrible. He's trying to slam this bridge with you on it into the wall, and I took a lot more damage than I expected to, shit. It's not too bad, though, you just stay in the air and combo his arm. Pretty easy peasy. And, since you only did half of his health, I wonder what's awaiting you at the bottom of the stairs. What could it be? Could it be the other half of this mini-boss? Oh, it is! So this half of the fight is pretty much just as simple, even though I took a hit. Oh man, I hate saying things are easy and then getting hit. That's really like the most frustrating thing ever. So all you have to do here is uh, make sure that you kill him before he can slam the platform and uh, cause it to crumble and you will fall to your death if that happens. But with Witch Time and his low health, it's not really that hard to avoid uh, certain death. Uncertain death, rather. Not really certain if you can avoid it. And our good friend Gamora is back. We haven't seen him for a whole 15 minutes or so. <laughs> you really have to appreciate how ridiculous 600 gigatons is! <laughs> so fun. As I've said time and time again, I just love how it, how this game completely throws reason to the wind. And it's all the better for it. Now, I think we are at the end of chapter one. So that is the prologue and one chapter down in this Let's Play. And I believe that's going to be a gold rate. Yeah, gold. I was hoping at the very least I didn't want silver. <laughs> I would be pretty disappointed by that. I'm not too terribly, uh, I'm not torn up by gold. 
at least not for Let's Playing. Uh, if I was just playing this normally, I would probably replay this. Anyway, we have our second angel attack, so I'm gonna try to focus and not screw this up this time. So I think I did pretty poorly last time. Alright. Alright, off to a good start. Good, 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 good. Five bullets left. Damn, this is going well. Oh shit, I... Fuck. Damn it. I cursed myself. I... I God damn it. 50 points with five bullets left. I think I missed every single shot with those last five bullets. I think what I'm doing is I'm... Towards the end, I'm trying to overlead them because I expect them to speed up or something. Oh man. That's terrible. Let's see. Okay. We're only about 11 minutes in, so let's go ahead and jump into Chapter 2. Uh, I won't cut here. Probably wait until ap after the uh, the cutscene in the fight at the end of... Or, I mean, the, the cutscene in the fight here. So, let's get on with Chapter 2. Vigrid, the City of Deja Vu. Fancy bumping into you here. Out to find some answers about your past, are we? You've quite the familiar face, and using the same powers, but you'll have to forgive me. Do we know each other? <laughs> same powers? <laughs> Don't make me laugh. Your little dip in that lake has left you a bit rusty. Oh. I've been high and dry for 20 years now. The only rust on me is from the lack of any real challenge. Perhaps you're up for the task. You've already disappointed me. This is a moment I've long desired. But you've forgotten your destiny. And wasted the past 20 years. You're right. I do seem to be having trouble remembering things of late. Would you be so kind as to take it from the top? Two overseers. The eyes of the world. They are the power behind everything. John, as heir to the clan, the time has come for you to prove your right to fight under the Umbra name. You may select opponents of your choice. Then allow me to face the outcast. None! Helen Kiadagat! The child is of impure blood! Challenging her would be a violation of our tenants of faith! It would not be the first time we faced each other. Kiard? Will you face me in this hallowed arena? Well, if I must. 
But I pray you've got a little something for me in return. You know, I'm very fond of stuffed animals. Oh, the downside to not interrupting the cutscene there is that I can't just burst out laughing when Jean does her putting on lipstick animation. She just scrawls like a big invisible line across her chin and her forehead and she totally misses her lips. Uh, so I'm going to try to front load a bunch of cool facts about Jean in this section and then we will talk about the combat a little bit. So Jean's bike, if you uh, could actually read the fuel tank, is called the Angel Slayer. And her license plate is 1UQDJ, uh, the letters QTJ, which is supposed to mean number one Umbra Witch, or 1U, and then the QTJ is QDJ. And you can get an alternate costume for either, uh, I think it's Jean or Bayonetta, called the QDJ outfit. And I'm not sure exactly what this reference is. Uh, I know Kamiya uh, has talked about how he would like to make a spin-off series with Jean as the heroine uh, QDJ. Like, as some, I guess as some sort of a alter ego? Also, uh, as an aside, you can unlock Jean as a playable character if you get, I think it's all platinum medals on normal. And an easy way to pure plat this fight is you can just cheese it out at the beginning and non-stop fire your guns, but that's not a fun way to do this. Uh, so one aspect of the game that I've neglected to really talk about, and I'm not nearly adept enough this game to do justice to, is the really deep combat system. And I highly recommend you check out some combo videos. One of my favorites is a video called Bayonetta Combo Mad, uh, and DJ... Uh, DJB13 has a series of combo exhibition videos that are really great too. Uh, they both they both demonstrate just how malleable everything is because uh, some of the under the hood systems like dodge offsetting and charge modifiers and a lot of the other really unique properties available from the the unlockable weapons they all interact in this really rich way. Uh, for instance, dodge offsetting, which I just mentioned, is a way to dodge while not interrupting a combo. So what do you do is you hold an attack button down, and you press uh, dodge while that's held down, and then re you release it and hit the next button in the string, and you'll dodge between attacks without interrupting the string. It's kind of like how buffering works in a fighting game. And sh nah, I'm going to keep talking about the the fighting mechanics probably at the beginning of the next episode for here though i'm actually running a little short on time thanks for watching everyone uh be sure to rate comment subscribe all that stuff uh also feel free to check out past videos other than just this series because lots of awesome stuff on my channel anyway that's gonna end that thanks for watching everyone take it easy have a good one